Hi, I'm Dr. Morris Sling, and I'm here uh, at MGH in the Department of Allergy and Immunology. And today we'll be talking about patch testing. Uh, so what is the role of patch testing? Uh, we use it when we're uh, encountering patients and trying to uh, diagnose uh, whether they might have allergic contact dermatitis or irritant contact dermatitis. And to go over what those are, um, irritant contact dermatitis is a condition where exposure to a substance might cause physical, mechanical, or other disruption of the skin. And common causes include things like soaps, cleansers, and solvents. Uh, so mild reactions may cause uh, itching, uh, dryness, uh, fissures, or little cracks uh, in the hands, but more severe reactions could cause blistering or pain. Um, and uh, irritant dermatitis uh, can uh, you know, occur to various uh, different uh, chemicals, but may not necessarily be uh, allergic in nature. Uh, by contrast, allergic contact dermatitis is uh, it occurs in contact with uh, what's called contact allergens. And these are generally uh, different substances that trigger a T-cell mediated immune response. And then they can cause a reaction in the skin that mimics uh, eczema. Um, so this can actually happen when you encounter uh, products that you've only recently started using, but even products that you have used for months or years. And the reason for that is that there are weak allergens or weak sensitizers, and you actually have to be exposed to them multiple times over months or even years to develop a reaction uh, to them. Uh, in contrast, there are some acute uh, potent sensitizers such as, so the most common example is with certain plant exposures like poison, I poison ivy. Uh, this actually uh, contains a potent uh, contact allergen or sensitizer called erushiol, and patients can develop reactions uh, quite soon after a contact. Um, whereas chronic um, uh, allergic contact dermatitis uh, may cause, again, eczema-like reactions, uh, dryness, uh, even skin thickening if it's uh, more prolonged in nature. And this can uh, be due to contact with things as benign and everyday as clothing, uh, shoes, personal products, cosmetics, and also metals and uh, certain occupational exposures uh, as well. Uh, so patch testing is what we use to try to uh, diagnose this. And um, this is generally done by uh, taking uh, patches, which uh, basically are prepackaged, and you want to remove the uh, initial packaging and then the plastic. And then when you apply it to the patient's back, uh, you want to apply it such that uh, the first uh, allergen will be in the upper left. And then subsequent patches you can place one by one until all of the patches are placed. You want to avoid the margin of the scapula as well as the midline of the spine as there can be movement there. You wanna make sure the allergens are well adhered to the back uh, and that everything is uh, smooth there. In general, we perform what's called a closed test such that the allergens are placed under uh, occlusion for two days. And then after that, an initial read is done about 15 to 60 minutes after removal of the patches. Then after that, usually the day subsequent, so this would be day four, the MD would do the final uh, read. Sometimes that read is done on day five, and in some cases, MDs will do a third reading and or a read on day seven, and this can sometimes be considered for a metal uh, allergy. Um, so the interpretation of patch testing is uh, should be performed by a trained uh, dermatologist or allergist. And uh, there are different grades uh, for these uh, reactions. Uh, so plus three reactions are confluent vex vesicles or a bullae formation, very large red reactions that extend well beyond the area of the patch test. Plus two reactions may have redness and micro vesicles or little uh, papular uh, areas and, but these, this should encompass more than 50% of the area of the patch. Uh, one plus reactions are generally red uh, erith erythematous reactions. They are palp pal palpable um, so that you should be able to feel them. And the redness should encompass more than 50% of the patch area. And then finally, plus or minus reactions or questionable reactions are um, less clear and may not necessarily encompass 50% of the area, uh, but are still considered um, higher than backgrounds. 
Uh, and these are important to differentiate uh, the positive reactions from irritant reactions, which are, they can have a glazed appearance to them, or they may have a follicular appearance, which are generally slightly bigger than the vesicles. And these reactions also tend to not be as red, and they may have a different color um, or pigmentation uh, to them. And so those are not considered true positive uh, reactions. When we're determining the relevance of patch test results, we always want to go back and uh, ask the patient about their history and their contact exposures. And a uh, contact allergen is only considered definitively relevant if the patient has had the positive patch test, has had known exposure to a substance containing that contact allergen, has removed that from the uh, their use and seen resolution of their rash, and then reintroduced that contact allergen and had the rash come back. So that would be considered definitive. And there are various gradations of certainty less than that, um, but that would be considered a definitive uh, contact dermatitis reaction. Finally, when we determine what um, a patient is allergic to, um, then we can actually take a uh, application um, that is from the North American Contact uh, Dermatitis Society and uh, it's called the ACDS CAMP app. Uh, so just to demonstrate the ACDS CAMP app, so this is the American Contact Dermatitis Society uh, app. And um, by clicking here, uh, we can look here, and I previously entered allergens that are relevant uh, for the patient, uh, but if we click in the upper left, this is your list of allergens. So this is the allergens that were positive on the patch test for the patient. And um, so I entered uh, some in here uh, just for demonstration purposes. And this is a list of all of the contact allergens that were positive. And then if we go back here, we can see under categories, there's uh, different categories of products here. And if we click under skin and we can scroll down to soaps and cleansers, for instance, this is a list of all the soaps and cleansers that do not contain any of the contact allergens that I had previously uh, listed uh, when we clicked uh, up there earlier. And then if we go back, we can also look at other uh, categories as needed. Uh, the nice thing about this app is you can also search by brand and then also by product name. And so this is a very comprehensive list of all the safe products that you can use that don't have uh, any of the contact allergens. You can also use the search field uh, to find the particular uh, product uh, that you're interested in. Um, so hopefully going over this, uh, you've had a nice uh, summary about how patch tests are used, uh, what conditions uh, this test can be used for uh, to help diagnose, again, allergic contact dermatitis and irritant contact dermatitis, how this test is interpreted, and how once we have the results from that, uh, we can place them in this app and uh, help get uh, some insight into which products to avoid and also which products are safe to use. Thank you.